the inferior the set, uh, SMD solver outer go cubicle is equal to progress and so on and so on. Okay? Uh, one important point here to note is that we don't seek to make any competition against existing Okama libraries like batteries, car, uh, containers, even this is the standard uh, Okama library, right? This is yet another uh, Okama library, okay? Where it has the benefit of being verified. So we are expecting some proper life of and the certain algorithms with existing libraries. So one of the first aspects that uh, we tackled in this project is to devise uh, a new specification language for uh, for a camera. And we are going to use this specification language, uh, or we are going to write elements in this specification language inside .ml file, so in, in uh, a camera interface. Okay? And this uh, formal specification language will be something like GML for the Java language uh, and SCSL for the C language. In particular, because we don't fix a particular tool to to read and to treat this uh, specification uh, elements. And the idea is to use this this specification language to give some uh, proof dimension, let's call it like that, to the types and the function types that we declare in this uh, interface files. But we want to keep writing informal comments. In comments Normal, uh, normal English inside this uh, interface file so that users can ignore the specification to understand what the functions are doing. I mean, because uh, it's just, a, as I said, another library, and some of our users are not going to be proof experts, so they can safely ignore the specification and still understand the behavior of the function. But on the other hand, we also want the specification to be uh, as simple as possible to, to be uh, easily understand by uh, a regular uh, user of our library. Okay? Even uh, though he's, he's, he or she may not be a specialist in, pro in program proving, he can understand what we wrote in the specification and what we proved <coughs> about this uh, particular function. Okay? So we chose to write most of, mostly of our um, specification elements in first order logic because we believe it's normally easier for a human to understand, but there are still some elements of high order logic as I'll show you From the implementation side, the .ml files, we keep the regular code, no proof elements, no specification at all inside these files, just regular code. Okay, this is an example of such a um, such, uh, such use of the, the specification language. It's the uh, vector.ml file, which uh, is the interface for recyclable uh, arrays. Okay. Here we can say things like uh, this is uh, an ephemeral type, which has already said an inferior type. Okay, we can change this internal state. We can say that we are going to axiomatize it, we are going to model it using a, se a logical sequence, just to model the elements inside the procedural array, and we can equip it with an invariant basis and a property that, or a logical property that all the inhabitants of this type must respect during the their life back during the execution of the mm -hmm. um, Considering functions, well, we can uh, say some preconditions about this function, a formula that or a state that this function must respect an at the entry point. In this case, we are limiting the possible values of the n argument here. And we can also uh, <laughs> write some post conditions using the ensures uh, clauses, where, for instance, we say what happens to all elements inside of these uh, new sequences. We just say the result is applying F to uh, each one of them. And this is here uh, the informal comment, as I said. So informal comments and specification comments in the same file. Let's talk a little bit about uh, our verification technology, what we chose as our uh, technology to tackle the construction of this library. And actually, the use of verification technology is a challenge by itself, because in fact, we are trying to use three different tools. We are trying to combine three different uh, verification tools in this project. Okay? And we want them to collaborate as smoothly as possible. From one side, we have LiveSweep, which is uh, mainly a first order uh, uh, tool, uh, verification tool, which is equipped with the first order specification logic. Uh, it has a calculus of preconditions, the uh, VCGen and where the generated VCs are normally sent to automatic three recruiters like the SMP uh, solvers. Right? Uh, we also use the CFML tool, which features a very uh, rich high-order separation logic for OCaml and is embedded in the uh, 
block. So it's a, a, a nice tool to prove arbitrary and intuitive uh, bug channel code. Right? And if we seek to prove some uh, purely applicative uh, data structure, for instance, we can actually do that directly in the talk to the proof system and later on use the extraction methods to get some actual work code. Okay, so we are trying to make these three tools to combine between them. Uh, in the picture, how does Y3 works and how it's going to be used in our project? Well, if we start with a .ml file plus its specification, we are going to translate it into the equivalent counterpart in Y3, in the Y3 side, what I call a Y3 signature. Okay? And so now, once we have this signature, it's time to actually build the, the verified implementation. So let's write some code in YML language, the, the programming language of uh, uh, of Y3, specify it and use its specification to uh, generate the verification conditions that we hope to prove with uh, the help of automatic theory provers. Once we have done this, we can use the uh, Y3 refinement mechanism to say that this implementation actually refines what I've promised in my, uh, my signature, what I have defined in this signature. Another, uh, or the next step would be to extract code. We use the Y3 extraction mechanism to get actual uh, OCaml code, right? And this, uh, this extracted code must be, uh, must comply with what I specified with, that, with the types that I've declared in my signature at the first moment. Okay. Just to note that these two dash blocks represent elements that are tool generated, not matter generated, and these one are elements that we are going to keep writing if I. From the CFML point of view, here we start with an actual uh, OCaml implementation, and the tool will generate what we call a characteristic formula as a set of complexes, where the characteristic formula is kind of a, a formula, a high order formula that represents the semantics of the, of the program. And now the, the, the programmer, the, the, the user, or someone who is verifying using CFML, must write the specification for the program, okay, the specification that we want to prove about this program, as a public statement. As you prefer. Okay, and now it's up to uh, to deal with the proof system to be, to interact with the this proof base to say that this statement is conformed to what the characteristic formula gave. Okay, so let me quickly list some of the challenges that we have been facing during the, the construction of the library and the solutions that we come up with to 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 tackle them. Okay. Let's start with uh, machine integers. In our library, we are very concerned with, uh, uh, with the proof of uh, overflow absence. Okay? We want to, uh, to, to prove that there is uh, no arithmetic uh, overflows in our, in our programs, right? But normally, this comes with, or the risk that is, there is in, an invasion in the specification because we need to uh, give some extra preconditions in our client code, normally to say, between which values our arguments are, sometimes these bounds are hard or even impossible to infer, and at the end we just have an impractical annotation proof ratio. So we, we need a, another solution. And in the context of vocal, we are uh, using a solution where we use a certain, a very specific class of machine integers, uh, which we, call, we say are limited growing machine integers. And the idea is, is, is this one. Think about um, a counter, okay? And imagine that this counter is a 64-bit variable. If I start to, from zero and I'll try to increment it by one at each time, it would take me centuries to make this variable overflow. So it's virtually impossible in a normal human time to make this variable uh, to overflow. And so that's our idea here is that we use machine integers that grow very, very, very slow. Okay? That's why I use this. What about non-verified client code? I mean, in the context of local, I've been equipping my uh, functions with some preconditions, okay, to limit the, the possible states in which the function can execute. But I'm going to give my library to non-verified clients. What happens if my client uses this, this, the function that I've so hardly verified uh, with the wrong values, okay? And so we want a solution that somehow deals with both cases, because I still want to uh, use the benefits of proving the functions, 
for instance, in other vocal functions, but I also want to be defensive in the sense that I can protect my uh, client from uh, hard pressures. And so we propose here another uh, clause, which is checks. Checks can be read as a, a regular uh, precondition here, okay, for this uh, resize function. But now, the idea is that it, in internal, it's going to generate me two different versions of this uh, resize function. One that I call the unsafe version, and it, it keeps the, the, the same precondition as it, as it was before, and a resize function, or the safe version, it keeps the same, the same name as before, where I'm actually going to raise a precondition if this, uh, this condition does not. Uh, well, I'm going to raise um, an exception, sorry, uh, when, whenever this condition does not hold at the end of the, of the function. Okay? So the idea in internal in the code is that I'm going to make a test. Okay? I'm going to say if this condition does not hold, then raise this exception. If it holds, then I can call safely the unsafe version. Okay? Let's talk about functors, because building a library in OCaml will eventually will fatally uh, use some, some functors. And in our case, we, are, we have um, an implementation of priority queues using the, this make functor. And in the context of vocal, we are able to use our specification language to uh, talk about or to specify some properties of our uh, functor uh, argument. Okay, in this case, I say that the compare function here, that I'm giving inside my, my functor argument, is actually or behaves as a pre order And then this can be exploited inside implementation of, of, some, inside implementation of, of my functor. Now, high order, okay? This is where uh, we have some manifestation of high order in our specification language, okay? The same is pre order uh, predicate as before, that comes from this external model uh, order. And another example using a um, uh, compare function, binary search, okay? It's the first argument of my binary search implementation. And here, this is pre order takes this uh, CMP function as argument, so it's a second, you can say it's a second order. <laughs> a predicate, okay? But I believe it's still simple for a human to understand what you are doing here. But there is actually, a, let's call it like a, a class of uh, high order function that is very important for us, uh, the Ocampo program, and it's very important for us, uh, building a library, in which are iterators. In Ocampo, normally, we do we perform iteration using full functions, which is the type like. This one, where I pass as my first argument the, the consumer function, right? So full is a high order function. And we propose to formalize, to specify iteration as it follows. We'll only talk about the finite sequence of elements that we have seen so far in the iteration. Let's say in some particular point in the iteration, this is the elements that I've been to my client, that I've enumerated. Okay, let's call the visited sequence, and I say nothing about the elements that are still to come. And in particular, this allows me to deal naturally with non-deterministic iteration and possibly uh, infinite forms of iteration. And on top of this um, visited sequence, I'm writing two logical uh, conditions, two predicates permitted, which characterizes all the possible uh, subsequence that I can see during my iteration, and complete which states when I might be done with the inversion states, no more elements to, to invert. Okay. And it's as simple as this, this is our uh, proposal to specify iteration, and in particular, we can use it to um, specify other forms of iteration, okay? For instance, cursor, streams, that in our context, in the context of local, we call uh, cascades, and so on and so on, okay? And as I've said, the purpose here is to reuse the exact same specification as I've shown in the previous slide, using the visited sequence and the two predicates permitted and complete. And another interesting point about this proposal is that it allows us to deal with effectful forms of iteration, for instance, like the heater the function it can perform some side effects. And this is actually what is shown in this paper by the where it uses it to prove the iterations over hash. 
<coughs> One interesting aspect of our project is that not only we prove uh, functional correctness, but we also might want to prove time complexity bounds about the execution of our program. And how do we do this? Well, we use time credits that we express in the separation logic of the CFML2 as, uh, log as logical resources. Okay? And the idea is here, for instance, when I'm executing the inter function, I'm going to traverse uh, my list, applying to each element to this constructor function. And I need to say in precondition that I have um, a number of time credits that is at least equal to the length of L. So I have the needed amount that I need to pay to actually execute my function. And one interesting aspect about this, this, this approach is that I can also return some, uh, some time credits. I can also talk about time credits inside those <coughs> conditions. And uh, this allows us to uh, do some nice analysis, for, for instance, um, amortized uh, complexity analysis. And this is actually the case here uh, in this paper, where a proof of unit five, which is uh, amortized uh, data structure, or that some amortized complexity was uh, proved to actually add those bounds. <coughs> well, now that I've shown you the challenge that we have faced and somehow we have resolved, we have solutions for them, mutable state is actually a problem uh, for us. Or at least it, it gives us some nice uh, problems, with some nice problems. For instance, if we have an append function in, um, in our vector model, what happens if we try to apply it twice the same, the same argument, okay, if my argument here, the two arguments are actually the same uh, structure, okay? So for now, uh, we assume these two to be different, so these two to be different uh, resizable arrays. Another interesting point about mutable state would be containers where the actual elements are mutable, okay? And for now, we keep uh, with uh, pure uh, these are limitations for now, but it's part of our research program, of course, to try to uh, keep on investigating and realizing these conditions in the future. Uh, very quickly, and to conclude some statistics about the modules that are uh, part of the library now, the module that we have proved so far. Okay, this is uh, this represents line of a camel code, line of specification in terms of our uh, specification language. The number of uh, generated VCs, if it is the case that this module was proved using white screen, uh, or the lines of uh, uh, COG, lines of COG uh, in terms of uh, program uh, specification codes so on that were uh, written to, to, to Right? We have uh, hash table implementation, resizable arrays, uh, priority queues as parent gifts, uh, zipper structure for lists, and some uh, array operations. So these are the five modules that so far are part of our local lab. Well, as some perspectives, um, we want to build a logical, let's say, or a mathematical library that can be shared uh, between white screen and CFML. Of course, as when I've shown you the, the order, the history order uh, predicate that came from the order module. We want those, those mathematical models to be shared between the these two tools, and we want to use COP as our middle agent, let's call it like that, okay, so that both white tree and CFML can understand what we wrote in, uh, in COP and can share these, these definitions, these methods, definitions. We want to keep extending and documenting the specification language, okay, of course we want to prove and add more models to, uh, to our library, and we hope this is the for now, we will to very soon make the first release of the, of the library. So, uh, taking home message is that this is a library for the community, this is a library that we want to, to be used by the by Ocamo programmers, so we want to make a call to uh, to suggest them, right? If you have some uh, models that you, you think could be part of the vocal, some models that you use and you think it would be nice to have uh, verified versions of the, those, those implementations, please, please feel free to to suggest them to us, we would be glad to hear your suggestions and to include them in our vocal library. So that's, that's it. Thank you.
question? So you mentioned the impact on Cork and Egypt and other schools. How do you see this? Could you elaborate on how do you see this work? Well, once we have um, a stable library, uh, once we have done our, our release, we hope that maybe the Cork developers will use our library in, inside their own their development. Right? For instance, there is a, um, we talked about proving um, uh, the cycle detection algorithm of Cork to be part of our library, and so maybe the, the Cork developers can um, use the verified version that we must supply. Must supply. There seems to be a fair amount of overlap between what you're trying to do here and what's done with the hassle. Are you familiar with, with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, can you compare them? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's similar goals and some, some similar yeah. techniques are both a little further in some places, but what are your comparisons? Yeah. Uh, so um, I would say that Liquid Pascal is much more close to Lightstream in the, the sense that we use it because it uses some of the refinement. Types and that kind of feels like the generated verification conditions by uh, white screen. Uh, but the idea of Liquid Pascal for what I've seen recently is that it's going to be using Haskell as its own meta language. Right? And so here in, in the, the, the white screen point the, from the white screen perspective, we are actually using a language that is much more suitable for program verification. Okay, it's not a mainstream language, it's actually like an algorithmic, algorithmic language. Okay? And the idea is to uh, from that extract correct by construction OCaml okay, code. And not to start by an actual OCaml okay, implementation. So because we think that it's easier for proof of automation. From, from that sort of tool support point of view, did you consider um, using attributes to, uh, to store the specification rather than just your own special comments? Because then, you would, then they would sort of be available, uh, I guess, in the syntax tree and the structure, and, and then other people could maybe use them if they needed to support. Okay, yeah, it's true that we are not considering it. That would be interesting, but for now, we just really like GML and CRC. CCSL for <laughs> Java and CSS, and they also have special comments in the parse line. For now, we're going to do this for Yeah, yeah. I mean, with attributes, then you get the plasma for free. Yeah. Okay, so, I was wondering how you connect the development between CFML and Wildfree. So, you said that then only we think of having a library in COP that we could uh, use in the CFML side and then use with the kind of bridge between Whitefree and Cobb. But my question is, if, if I express my specification in this library, that is comes from Cobb, okay. the problem is that if I write something in Whitefree, I will use a style that the, the decision is happy with. Okay. And then I may have to write some blue code between the Cobb spec and the spec I use for the tool. So in, have you made some experiments? Do you know if there is some blue code to write, or whether uh, the, the Cobb spec is actually quite close to what you the idea here is to use uh, an internal tool to white that we call realization. So we write our theories in the white tree language itself. Okay? And so then we have to automatically translate them to a cock file. And the idea is that when I say that cock will be our be a legend is that white tree reads the the white tree theory and CFML will read the uh, cock counterfile. Okay, so it will be still kind of two different uh, uh, worlds. Okay, one written in white tree and another for certain content in But the idea is that these two must uh, must be equivalent in some sense. The white tree theory must be valid in the sense of the realization, the cock file that I produce. So the, for me, the the Google that you are talking about would be this realization, this automatic generated cock. Okay, let's thank Mario again.